Hi, I'm Gary Bainbridge from tipsfortravelers.com and today I want to share with you some tips on visiting Florida, the Sunshine State. Many people when they think of Florida think of Orlando and the theme parks, but there's so much more to the state than just theme parks. So in this video I'm going to share with you seven great ideas and things to see. The first of these is St. Augustine, which is just a short few hours north of Orlando. I had not expected to find the oldest inhabited town in the United States in Florida, but it is. St. Augustine is the longest permanent settlement dating back to the 1570s. It's a gorgeous place. The highlight is the Castillo de San Marcos Fortress, built in the 17th century by the Spanish, that settled and controlled the town. There are also grand buildings built by wealthy pioneers like Henry Flagler, co-founder of Standard Oil. There are now museums like the Leitner Museum that used to be the Alcazar Hotel and a college. The Hotel Ponce de Leon is now Flagler College. The second must-see site, I believe, in Florida is also a short drive from Orlando, but this time heading east, and it's to Cape Canaveral. In Cape Canaveral is the magnificent Kennedy Space Center. It's a fascinating place which young, old, everybody will absolutely enjoy. So let me tell you a little bit more and show you around the Kennedy Space Center. It's in Cape Canaveral and it's a fascinating place. During the tour of the rocket garden full of the early American space rockets, the guide pointed out that the early trips into space were really just ballistic missiles with tiny cramped capsules for astronauts perched on top. You can get up close to the actual Atlanta space shuttle that went into space 33 times, head out to the launch pads and walk under a vast Saturn V rocket of the type used to power the Apollo missions to the moon. You can also meet a real astronaut, and here our NASA is preparing to take man all the way to Mars and back. So my third tip is heading further south in Florida, and this time it's down to Miami. If you're visiting Miami though, the place to go is Miami South Beach and the Art Deco District. It's absolutely magnificent and very unique. Let me show you around and explain a little bit more why I think that's the third great thing to do in Florida. Strolling around the beautifully preserved Art Deco District along Ocean Drive, Miami South Beach, it's really hard to believe that before the 1980s, it was a shabby and deteriorating area a threat from developers mostly inhabited by poor fixed-income pensioners, drug dealers and displaced Cubans. It was so bad that the Miami Vice TV show used it often as a location inspiration for many of its crime storylines focused on drug dealers and thugs. It all changed after Barbara Capitan and her supporters succeeded in getting almost a square mile of South Beach on the National Register of Historic Places. It developed from there to what it is today a mecca for hip bars, restaurants, and a magnet for beautiful people to congregate and preen. So after visiting Miami South Beach, it's further south again, down through the beautiful Florida Keys to Key West. It's a very eclectic city, it's very quirky, it's very unusual, but it's great fun. So let me show you around Key West and show you why this, for me, is another must-see in Florida. Ernest Hemingway and ex-USA President Harry Truman fell in love with Key West and had homes there that you can now tour. However, Key West also has the iconic marker for the southernmost point of the United States that every visitor lines up to take their picture with. Cuba is just 90 miles away from there. Eclectic, vibrant and sometimes eccentric, the old town is full of distinctive wooden buildings, busy bars and diverse restaurants along with some unusual museums, such as the Shipwreck Museum, that tells the story of how residents of the town became wealthy from the many ships that floundered on the coral reef surrounding the area. So after visiting Key West, it's back through the Florida Keys up to the Everglades. This is a very unique part of the world, very marshy, very wet, and it's a chance to see alligators, snakes, and so much more. It's really, really good fun. And let me show you why I think it's another must-see place to go in Florida alligators and snakes there's nothing like an encounter with a few scary creatures to make for a thrilling day you can see them up close at the everglades safari park by zooming through the everglades on a thrilling airboat in the wild before watching a show featuring massive alligators a baby one and a fearsome snake so after visiting the Everglades, I would keep heading up the west coast of Florida through Cape Coral, which is very beautiful, but on to the Fort Myers district. And here you'll find something very unique. Thomas Edison and Henry Ford had their winter estates here, 
And these are beautiful houses, beautiful grounds, and they give you not only a great insight into the men themselves, but also life at the turn of the century. Uh, and that's the 1900s. Let me show you around the Thomas Edison and Henry Ford Estates and show you why I think this is again another must-see if you're visiting Florida. The prolific inventor Thomas Edison and car magnate Henry Ford were great friends and eventually owned magnificent winter houses next to each other close to Fort Myers in Florida. At the time Edison bought the land, the location was remote and difficult to reach. He set up laboratories and worked out of here on many of his inventions, including how to make the United States self-sufficient in rubber. Ford, meanwhile, used the house to be close to his friend on his birthday and enjoy time relaxing with the man. The estate and houses are beautifully maintained and offer a fascinating insight into these two American business icons. And so after visiting the Thomas Edison and Henry Ford estates, keep heading up the west coast and you'll eventually get to Clearwater Beach. It's a very beautiful part of Florida and has some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Big long white stretches of sand, lots to do as a tourist including great sunset cruises. So let me show you a little bit of the beaches, show you some of the sunset cruise and tell you about why I think Clearwater Beach is another must-see attraction and sight to see in Florida. Long stretches of sparkling white sand with a warm welcoming ocean have made the area popular for snowbirds fleeing the harsher winters further north in the United States. Young people head here for rowdy spring break parties and families look for a sunny and affordable vacation resort. Rows of condominiums and hotels follow the line of the beaches, while set back behind them are bars and restaurants offering a diverse range of food for all budgets. And so there you have it. Those are my seven must-see attractions and sites in Florida. If you're going there, go beyond just the theme parks and see so much more of Florida and focus on those seven things and you'll have a great and very diverse experience. Now, how do you do it? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. First of all, you could simply go on a sort of a fly dry vacation. Fly into Orlando, you can see the various theme parks, jump in the car and then basically do, it's pretty much a circuit around those seven sites. Or you could go on, an, on some sort of organized tour. So for example, uh, Titan Travel in the UK, they have a tour called The Best of Florida, which takes you around all of those sites and so much more. So remember, those are some tips, some advice, and hopefully some inspiration for visiting Florida. Remember, for more tips and advice, you can sign up for the YouTube channel, the Trip Films channel, and of course, visit the site at tipsfortravelers.com.